Morning. Recording in progress. I wasn't ready. Hang on. Jared just asked me, are you ready? And I was like, yeah, we're getting there. Good morning. Good morning. Again, welcome. I'm Shannon Hanley, and we welcome you to First Congregational United Church of Christ of Lowell. We have send our thoughts and prayers out to Pastor Shannon Jamal Hollmans, whose father did pass away this week. This morning, we will be having um, special worship, so uh, we are glad you are here to join us. I, of course, have some announcements to share. The first would be Welcome to Pride Month. Yesterday we did celebrate um, at the Lowell Pride Festival. So Lowell Pride, as you know, is one of our partners here in this building. And they put on their festival yesterday. The church was a supporter there, uh, Platinum sponsor. So we were glad to do that. And we had a church booth. So thank you to all those volunteers. Our youth also had a booth there where they sold lots of hot dogs and veggie dogs. And we made some money. So thank you to everyone who made that possible. The Imagine Stewardship Campaign was celebrated on Consecration Sunday at the beginning of May, so we want to thank everyone who's already returned their pledge cards. If you would still like to turn in a pledge card, you can do so. If you get it done um, soon, then it can still be uh, incorporated into the annual budget. We're planning for that for approval in the next couple weeks, I think. Check out the pollinator garden, which is in the front of the church there around the big rock. Roland and his crew are working on the garden, and we are looking forward to see what blooms there. Things will grow, don't worry. It looks pretty bleak right now, but things will start growing. Perfect. We have faith in that. All of our youth and um, their friends are invited to do some mission work in Memphis this summer. Um, to offset the costs, uh, we are still collecting pop cans. So if you have any pop cans, if you've got a lot of pop cans in your garage or something, let me know and we will come pick them up. If you have just a bag full, there are bins at this south door. You can drop them off there and the teens will return those for you. They can be, usually we return a lot more beer cans than we return pop cans. So whatever you got, we'll take them. We'll take them. Um, if you have a youth who is in 6th through 12th grade that is interested in going on this mission trip, we still have space for that, uh, you can let me know and we will make that happen. Just a uh, note for today, any junior and senior high youth that are here will be invited to stay in worship service. And this morning I would like to welcome Amy G.S.A. Brooks. She is a minister and an author. She has written the book called Another Scroll, Defiant Readings for Lectionary Year C. Most recently, she's been busy writing her second book and providing pulpit supply for progressive congregations, both in person and in the digital space. So we welcome Amy this morning. Because Pastor Shannon isn't here, you're stuck with me. So we are um, going to go ahead and get through this as best as I'm able. Um, at this time, we would like to invite everyone to meet and greet those around you by passing the peace of Christ. May God be with you.
Hi, Gretchen. We do welcome everyone this morning, and I do want to invite you to share with us uh, during our coffee time following the worship. We have lots of Rice Krispie treats and some s'mores bars, so there will be treats to be had. Uh, young people will be invited out into, uh, people under sixth grade, will be uh, invited out into um, our children's spaces after the children's message. There are some young people in the building, Kate. Might you go get them and bring them here? Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for being responsible and taking care of them. Will you join me now in the call to worship as printed in your bulletin? You may stand if you wish. Blessed are you, children of God. Blessed are those who walk in the light of God's love. Blessed are you, children of God. Blessed are those who persist and persevere. Blessed are you, children of God. Blessed are those who reflect the colorful diversity of God through their love and their witness to the world. We will now join in singing hymn number 395, In Christ There Is No East or West. prayer. There's a few uh, announcements, a few prayer requests I'd like to make, and one is just to continue to keep Pastor Shannon and her family in our thoughts as um, they go through this time. And then Rachel Francisco, her father-in-law Dewey, is currently having, like, currently having a heart attack, but things are, doctors seem to be hopeful for that, so he's going to the cath lab right now and um, they seem pretty positive, but he is 90, Rachel said. <laughs> Please be sure the man is 90 years old, she said. So just to continue to keep Dewey in our thoughts. Are there other prayer requests? I just have a quick update on my grandson who had um, surgery this last week. 
He is home, resting. I can't believe he went home the same day uh, and doing well. So he's healing. Other prayer requests? Good news to share? Just prayers for celebrating Pride yesterday with everyone. Just a thought that I wanted to share. My daughter and her family are here from Denver visiting, and she said, gosh, how Lowell has changed and life is so open and welcoming. In the morning, she took her five-year-old to Alto to Dairy Discovery, the Swiss Lane Farms, and in the afternoon, she got to go to the Pride Festival with him. And that speaks volumes for our community, I think. All right, if you'll join me just in a short moment of prayer. Dear God, we know that you have heard our prayers, and we ask that the comfort of the Holy Spirit be with us today and every day. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. And if you'll join me now in the Lord's Prayer as you know him. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Save us from a time of trial. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And our own generosity is an opportunity to use a portion of our blessing to minister to others. The Holy is calling us to gather our gifts and to offer them to God in worship. These are monetary gifts we give now, although we have given time and talent in other ways. Let us gather the gifts and worship through generosity. If the ushers would come forward, please. God, we praise you for the many ways that you have blessed us to share our blessings with the world. May these gifts reflect the power of your love in meaningful ways to those who need it most. Amen. At this time, I'll have the young people come forward. Felix, I need you to hold this for me. All right, so yesterday at Lowell Pride, for anyone who was there during the story time, we read this book called What Are Your Words? And this is a book about pronouns, help people discover their pronouns. But one part of this book really was awesome to me, and that's the part where the person not only is talking about their pronouns, but is talking about 
their names, the things that name them. Beautiful, talented, athletic, giving, compassionate, okay? So that's what they're, they're talking about in that book. Now, I'm not going to read it to you today, but step over here, Felix. I wanted to talk about name tags. So, my name, as we know, is Shannon. Shannon. Here's my name tag, right? My pronouns are she, her. What's another name I have? Does anyone know? Hmm. Okay. Adventure us. <laughs> you guys are going too fast. Okay, caring, strong. Okay, we got him. We got him, right? So we all know that I could go by any of these names, right? Okay? We missed one. I think I'm taping my hair up here all the time, every time. Okay? Here is the best one. Here's my best name. Read that out loud, Felix. Child of God. Read it again. Child of God. All right? That's a name I can be known by. I'd like you guys to come step over here and make a name tag. You can put on here any name you'd like. Pass them out, Liam. I drew a line on the side you don't want to write on. Here's a pen and a pen. You want to take a... Go ahead and make a name tag for your names. And you can put more than one name on a tag. You can use multiple tags, however you'd like to do it. How do you like to be known? You guys can put your papers right up here. Lydia, not on the on the line side, on the other side. Right here, Lydia. You guys can step right up here, if you'd like. Lydia, yes. What else? How else is Lydia known? What might we say about Lydia? Dancer. Dancer. That's a name. What else? What do you, friend, that's a good one. Student. Cheerful, graceful. These are all great words for Lydia, right? What's another great word for Lydia? Child of God, yes. Kate, what do you have? Child of God. Liam, what do you have? Liam. What else? He, him. He, him, okay. What else would describe you? Child of God. Child of God, all right. What do you guys have? Child of God, right? Mm -hmm. Perfect. What do you have? Writer and child of God. Excellent. That's Rachel. What do you have, Felix? Felix. Okay. <laughs> Anything else, Felix, you want to share? Uh, no. <laughs> no? Athletic? I didn't put that on here. Okay, but you could, right? Yeah. These are all names. And we are all children of God, right? doesn't matter how tall we are, how small we are, right? Who we love, where we come from, everyone is a child of God, and you are all welcome to partake in all of God's kingdom, okay? Will you guys join me in prayer? Dear God, thank you for bringing us together today. Thank you for reminding us that we are all children of God, and we will treat others as children of God. In your name we pray. Amen.
Good. I have two readings this morning. The first comes from 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, and then verses 11 through 17. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. For this is the message you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We must not be like Cain, who was from the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not be astonished, brothers and sisters, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love one another. Whoever does not love abides in death. All who hate a brother or sister are murderers. And you know that murderers do not have eternal life abiding in them. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? And now I'm reading a poem written by Amy called Gomer's Complaint. Come as you are, the preacher said, just as you are, no need to change. So I stood and excused me my way along the narrow row towards the aisle. And as I went, my shoes caught on someone's feet, tripping me. So I left them behind. Come as you are. So I swayed down the aisle hands reaching out to steady me and cloaking me with loose linen garments. Come as you are, the singer crooned. So I elbowed my way through the crowd and the piercings in my face snagged in their hair and plucked from my flesh. Come as you are, scrolled across the screen, but the altar was too high from the ground. So I reached into my heart and plucked out my hopes and dreams, all the lost loves and yearnings. I cracked open my skull and dragged out my brains, every hard-won belief, every memory of joy and life, and I piled them before me, trampled them into living stairs that whimpered softly as I climbed and left each one behind. Come as you are, the preacher said, as we stood finally face to face, and I caught a reflection of what I had become in the journey, and I no longer knew myself at all. Here ends the lesson. May God transform understanding into action. Morning, everyone. For those who may be among us who are blind or visually impaired or online, I want to begin by introducing myself with a visual introduction. I'm Amy. I am a short, fat, white woman with a short buzz cut haircut that maybe needs a trim to my mind. I'm wearing a black dress which has pockets Thank you. 
and I am also wearing a KF94 face mask to accommodate my physical needs and as a spiritual practice. And I am so pleased to be here. I mean, now. Earlier today when my alarm clock went off, man, um, less so, not to, you know, nothing against you, but when that alarm goes off and you realize it's not um, just turn it off and sleep a bit longer kind of day, but it's in fact um, just turn it off until the second and third alarm goes off if you're like me. But, you know, you have to get out of bed, um, which is to my mind just the saddest thing that can happen in my day ever. You know, I have to get out of bed and I have to put actual clothing on and then I have to leave my house and I don't know about you all but I really enjoy my house and one of my favorite things to do with my house is to be in my house. But I'm really happy to be here now. About halfway here I fully woke up. So apologies to everyone else I was sharing the road with before them. And I am so pleased to be here with you this day. And today I'm going to be talking about how to love a church, but I feel like I need to maybe begin with why to love a church. Why on a day like this, where it's a little overcast, but it's Michigan, we know it's going to improve, or snow. On a day like this, when it's Pride Weekend and we could all be sleeping off a late night and thinking happy memories of everything we did yesterday, why do we come into spaces like this and um, devote this time together to the love of God and each other? Why, in our world where right now Powerful people in the name of white Christian nationalism are pitting the evil forces of anti-Semitism and Islamophobia against each other for their personal gain in a conflict that we are complicit in while children die. Why would we continue to come together in this way? It's 2024. A lot of our friends and family, our peers, our loved ones have decided this is not for them. Why do we keep coming here in the face of everything? I know that you have your own reasons for being here, and I have my own reasons for continuing to connect with faith communities like yours. And maybe, maybe one of them is that you just grew up here, or it's tradition, or you can't imagine not coming together on a Sunday morning. Maybe it's cultural. Maybe it's the opportunity you get to see other humans in the flesh once a week. Maybe you come because this is where you wrestle with the big questions, with the, the whys and the wonders. And maybe it's the place you come to, to take those questions deeper, below the brain and into the heart space. Maybe. Maybe you come here not because of the history that our faith tradition has had, but sometimes in spite of it. Maybe you come here in defiance of an experience, maybe not as extreme, but something like we heard in the poem a moment ago, maybe you have been a part of a movement or a high control group which has tried to shape you into something you are not and your decision to be here in this chair is a pushback against that. And our scripture verse we heard a lot about being children of God and the evidence of that is how we love our siblings, right? 
anyone who has siblings knows that relationship, not always the most visibly loving, right? Anyone who has been part of a family system knows there are tensions and conflicts, and sadly, some of us know that our families sometimes harm us deeply. And in the same way, our faith families sometimes harm us deeply. And so, particularly because it's Pride Month, and particularly because it's Pride Weekend, I'd like us to just put a pin for a moment in how to love a church and just to attend to the reality that there are likely people among us or online who have been deeply wounded in the name of religion. Particularly at this moment in time when the trans community is under attack. Which means the queer community is under attack. Because there is no pride without trans pride. There is no pride without asexual and aromantic pride. There's no pride without understanding that pride means all of us together. So just in case that has been part of your story, or just in case you know someone who shares that story, I want to read this poem to you. And, and as I read it, OK, imagine with me for a minute that you are in your favorite thrift store. Right? You can always get a bargain there. You're in your favorite thrift store. You're all the way at the back of your favorite thrift store. Okay? You're at the bargain bin at the back of your favorite thrift store. And then you reach, you reach your hand down deep into the bargain bin at the back of your favorite thrift store. And your hand closes around something and you bring it up and you recognize it. Because it is something that you had a hand in the making or creating of. You know, maybe you are a crafty in the fiber arts and you pick it up and realize it's a sweater that you made at some point. Maybe you do woodwork and it's a spice rack that you made. Maybe you are a potter with clay. You get the idea, right? Think of where you are creative in space. You made something, sent it out to the world, and now here it is. In the bottom of the bargain bin at the back of your favorite thrift store, and as you investigate it, you discover it's not in the same condition it was when it left your hands. Other people have been careless with it. Some people have been intentionally cruel. Are you with me in that mental image? This poem is titled, Abomination. Who has unraveled you? Who has snipped and ripped at your intricate strands until the very fibers of your being hang like cobwebs across the chasm between the lies you have been told and the truth of who you are? Who slipped loose the yarn? Who has dropped all these stitches? Who undid all my good work? Who hung you out to dry beneath the merciless heat of an oppressive sun until the vibrant brightness and the rich depths of the spectacular spectrum I gave you have faded and grayed into the muted pallor of an overwashed sock? Who stripped out the colors? Who has denied you the promise of my rainbow? Who has soiled you? Who ground into your soul the filthy fallacy that I made you wrong so ruthlessly that you have begun to settle limply into this matted, besmirched state of existing? Who slung the mud? Who wrote your name in dirt? 
Who infringed upon my trademark? Who has discarded you? Who has removed you from the honoured place of display, slipping you farther and further back into the shadowed corners of the closet? Who discounted your worth? Who miscalculated your value? Who diminished my treasure? Who has done this abominable thing to my good and perfect creation? Show Mama who did this to you. I will sort them out. Friends, I wonder whether in times like these, a leading reason why we might choose to continue to love a church despite and in defiance of everything is because we understand as created beings of a loving God that we, when we come together, have an opportunity to be about the making and mending and rebuilding of each other. I wonder if we choose to love a church because we understand intimately that this work that we do together of loving God and loving each other well, that it is life-saving. And I don't mean that metaphorically. That we, the family of a loving God, save lives when we love each other and this world well. What could it mean if more of us were able to love like that? If more of us were able to understand the gift and the privilege and the responsibility of being children of God and finding ways to connect with and communicate to and lovingly rebuke when needed and always, always, always uplifting each other in love as siblings. I mean, those are some of the thoughts I have about why you might love a church. But let's turn now to how to love a church. Um, the rest of my thoughts will take roughly 45 minutes to three hours. It would be the greatest delight and pleasure to me if when you leave today to go to the rest of your weekend activities, you leave this parking lot thinking, well, I learned nothing today. Thinking that because you already know how to love a church. I mean, can you think of a few of the ways right now? I've been here for roughly an hour and I've seen evidence of it already. The way you come together with your prayers for concerns that are happening literally right now is how you love each other. Your presence at Pride downtown is how you love each other. The offering that you collect, the communion that we share later, are how we love a church. You already know how to do these things. But just in case, just in case any of you need a reminder, I want to share one final poem with you. Um, and in a fit of out-of-character creativity, uh, a poem about how to love a church is titled, How to Love a Church. <laughs> we can be quite literal people, we Australians. <laughs> so here's how to love a church. Wash your cup after coffee hour. Greet a guest, join the choir, teach the children, 
agree to serve on a committee. Bring your talents, bring your energy, bring your enthusiasm, put your money in the plate, show up for services, show up. Show up not because the doors are open, but because the invitation is open to bring your whole self to the gathering of selves and dare to be challenged, informed, inspired, to be the one who challenges, informs, inspires, to be the presence that only you can bring to the beloved community in the tradition of the spirit of love. And love. Do the hard stuff. Stay in the room with the crying baby, with that adult who glares at the crying baby, with that person who gets on your last nerve. Love the whole congregation. Stay in the conversation even when you disagree, especially when you disagree. Stay because you disagree and leave. Because love can mean knowing when to wipe the dust and go, when to say no. And know within yourself when you've been wrong, when being strong feels more like bending, like picking up the threads and mending, like finding new instead of ending, and tending things you find surprising, and find, to your surprise, that all the ways to love a church are the same as all the ways to love yourself. Greet a guest and show up. Be ready for the glow up. You might even need to grow up, proclaim your no and so up, and wash your own damn cup. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Amy. We will now join in singing of tune number 332 as we gather at your table.
At this time, we will enter into our time of communion. I ask that you join me by looking at the insert in the bulletin. People of God, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Give thanks to the God of wild love and extravagant acceptance, who is faithfully present in both the grit and glitter of life. Holy God, awaken us to your dream for creation, a world in which every member of the human family is free to flourish however you made them. Forgive us for the moments we have held back your ever-flowing current of love, dignity, and justice. We make us into a people eager to see you in the faces, bodies, and expressions of all people. Remind each of us to step out of the shadows of our lives and shine fearlessly and courageously Ignite the divine light within us to sparkle through the prism of our bodies and brighten every corner of this earth. It is with the power of Christ that we pro proclaim that this table is open to all people, no matter who you are or what you believe or what you've been told. Here at the Lord's table, we remember the simple gathering of a chosen family that came together for a meal that proclaimed a new way of being in the world. We remember God's radically inclusive love made real in the life, ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus. We remember the one who befriended the forgotten, embraced the outcast, and saw the image of God in all people. We remember the one who confronted every power that disconnected, marginalized, oppressed, and othered. Join together. It is here at this table that we find hope and imagination to see God's dream of promise of a world of wholeness. And it is here that we receive the nourishment and strength to continue on the paths of justice. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup saying, this is my blood, my very life poured out for you. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. God, we thank you for breathing this world into existence and proclaiming from its birth, it is good. We come to you with gratitude for endless blessings that we see, feel, and know on our journeys of life. We celebrate the rich diversity of your creation, every beautiful body, every shade of skin, every expression of love. Through your spirit, open our hearts to the joy we can find in the midst of life's challenges. Remind us that we are loved fiercely and forever. However the world may try to hold us down or tell us who to be, Remind us that nothing can separate us from your presence. Beloved children of God, this table is set. Come and feast with the one who loves you more than you can possibly imagine.
Holy Creator, we remember the sacrifice of Jesus and all who follow to bring love and justice to the world. May this food and drink nourish us as they are the symbol of Christ's essence in all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you now join me now in the affirmation of our mission statement, which is printed in your bulletin and also here on the wall. Responding to the living God with a progressive voice and working hands, we are called to feed Christ's community in mind, body, and spirit. Thank you for this worship experience, O Lord. Please dismiss us in your light and in your love. Let us leave this worship experience with a renewed sense of hope and healing. Let us leave this space walking and serving in authentically understanding that our greatest witness is our truth. Let us prayerfully work to find the strength to resist the pressure from others, to change from who God created us to be. Thank you, God, for loving us who we are, showing us how to love others who they are, and for being who we are. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. We go in the name of Christ.